It's actually a sarong. <laughs> and, uh, have, you, have you seen that picture? Of that? Oh, God. Doesn't he look oddly Australian in that? It's, <laughs> like, uh, it's just like the, the hat, the raincoat, and then the sarong. For some reason, that looked like you looked like an Australian festival goer. <laughs> what? It, did, it didn't I've help never that I had what a nuts. gigantic shit-eating grin on my face, and... and I was high Hello as a there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're all going to do Australian accents today. I think that's that's oh, going to be no. how it has to be. What do you say we get then? Play some didgeridoo. All right, this is just already a mess. Uh, hello, everyone. <laughs> Tune in to Trends with Benefits. This is our weekly podcast where we gather a round table of experts to talk about the tech topics of the day and all kinds of other things. If you're watching via YouTube right now, we want to hear what you want to talk about. Go ahead and pop in there and leave us some comments. We've got a bunch of things that we're going to get to, but let's take a look at our cast here today. I'm Greg Nibbler, your host, and to my right, the bearded gentleman. I'm Brad Burke. Brad Burke, uh, followed by another bearded gentleman. I am Drew Prindle. Excellent. And uh, Caleb Dennison. Caleb Dennison. Now, Caleb, I know we've Talked about beards way too much on this show uh, generally, but you said you want to grow yours back. I think I'm going to have to. I Why? keep seeing these videos uh, that I did from two years ago, one year ago, and I'm just like, man, that's a that's a fine looking gentleman right there. Oh, know? complimenting <laughs> yourself? No, it's just that you know I see videos. First of all, it's hard to watch videos of yourself. It really, yeah, that it's, is. It's I, agree. I agree. It's harder than hearing your yourself recorded. I guarantee mm-hmm. you. Totally. Because well, all trouble. you do is pick apart everything. Like, why did I slouch there? What am yeah. I when did I grow that double chin? Oh, that kind yeah. of th- shouldn't I have shaved? That kind of thing. But uh-huh. um, but yeah, no, I just like I don't know. I think that the beard plays well on camera, and I think I'm gonna have to bring it back. Right now, I'm like one of the few guys without a beard in this. Right. Place. See, that makes you. Stand Stand out. Yeah. But uh, I might have to come back with Beard 3.0. We'll okay. see what happens. Well, we'll see. Maybe the people will let us know what they think. think Maybe when it's not 94 chops, outside. man. Get the chops. <laughs> I used to have those. You've seen <laughs> those I've pictures, I've seen those right? pictures, which is why I want them to come back. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get to some topics here. Right off the bat, we do have to talk about this, the iPhone 7, which this is just going to get more and more coverage as it go- gets closer to the release date because everybody's going crazy over so it. So let's hop on that bandwagon. Let's hop right on yeah. that. <clears> the <throat> iPhone 7, here it. are the latest rumors. So we've talked about how the the function of it is going to look we've discussed that before and there's a great article at digitaltrends.com about that um you know that they're probably getting rid of the headphone jacks they're going with the uh, a few other things that they're going to be changing up with it as far as the camera but um we do have a release date now finally and it is slated for september 12th that is when it's going to be released and pre-orders will start september 9th for the iphone 7 so there we go that's the that's the newest thing the newest thing coming out about it. Who in this room is jumping on that bandwagon? It's not going to be. I still not am not having I. a hard. Yeah. No, I mean, no nobody. Andrew. Nobody's going to jump yeah. on it. Um, I'm curious for people watching. Are you excited about the iPhone 7? Because, I mean, I see, you know, it gets a lot of traction online. People seem to be really interested in it. I'm an Android person. I just bought my new cheap Android uh, this weekend because I broke another one. Because uh, I break phones a lot. So I'm not going to buy the fancy phone because I know it's just like with sunglasses for me. I'm going to break them. Uh, so I'm not going to do that. That doesn't look like a cheap phone to me. It's Well, it, it looks fancy. I'll say that. <laughs> it's got the gold. And uh, if you can't see this, uh, if you're listening via podcast, but it, it, yeah, it's gold. It's got a nice uh, shimmery pattern to it. It's LG K10. That's oh. that's what it, yeah. Is it like a turd in tinfoil? Is that what it that's is? pretty much it's it. Like yeah. shiny it's got turd. a camera. All right. uh, I can read my email on it. And that's all you need. Like, and okay. I can play Pokemon Go. So there we go. Seriously, Done. like as long as the iPhone 7 does all of that, like, you know. Yeah, then you're set. <laughs> I'm set, I guess. But really, like, what's what's the killer thing on this thing? Like, what's the what's the progression? What's well, what's I think new and I, different. I think it's what they're going to be using this for, and that's actually something that Apple came out with uh, today, talking about augmented reality. You know, it's talking about Pokemon, and the success of that, the uh, success. So Apple is going to make about three billion dollars over the next couple of years just off of downloads for Pokemon Go. And I think they're seeing the writing on the wall about augmented reality. And we were talking about how Pokemon Go might be a stepping off point, you know, to introduce this technology to everybody who didn't maybe understand what AR was. And now they get it and Apple wants to capitalize on it. And they're setting up an entire department just for AR and to start researching that and seeing what they can do. Because if you think about it, they've got so many devices out there in people's hands, especially with this new iPhone 7. You know sales are going to go through the roof. I'm sure they will. I'm, I'm guessing. Um, and they can really start pushing this this platform out to a lot of people. Well, can they, though? Because it seems like the, the new thing that they're bringing in with the 7 is the, the 7 Pro, which they, you know, at least from the mock-ups, has two cameras as opposed to one, which is something that has been made Google's Tango project work at all, is that it has a second depth camera. 
so that instead of, you know, with Pokemon Go, it's a single camera, and it isn't, mm -hmm. it's AR, but it sort of isn't, because it's like, it it's doesn't just care, like overlay. yeah, it doesn't yeah, care what's right. going on it's around real, you, it just puts a Pokemon AR. somewhere, sure. whereas when you use the Tango, you can see it's recognizing flat surfaces, walls, corners, it's able to pick up And that's because it's objects. got the stereoscopic right. cameras. It's, yeah, it's got two cameras, and it's able to sense depth, well, I think they actually there, they literally use an imaging camera and a depth camera, yeah. um, and... Do you think Apple's going for the the ability to sort of mimic the the Gear VR, you know, or a cardboard type situation? No, no. I, and they might have their own headset coming, but I think this is more about the the Tango thing that Google is trying to do, where you walk into a mall and you're like, "Where do I go in this mall?" and you hold your phone up, right. and it shows, and it shows you like, you. "Oh, you follow this pathway, and it takes you to where you're going." Um, I think that's going to be a more, um, at least immediately applicable use of the technology. Well, that would make sense if they employ like Bluetooth 5 in the iPhone 7. And I don't know if they've really talked about doing <laughs> that much, but you could use the Bluetooth beacon technology mm -hmm. in combination with exactly what you're saying. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that would definitely be a thing. Maybe that's the that's what the Has iPhone 7 really brings. That, that would be cool. Mm -hmm. That'd be a selling point for sure. Has, uh, has that standard been finalized, Bluetooth 5? Oh, yeah. Okay. It's done. So what is, what, just for anybody who doesn't know, Bluetooth 5? Bluetooth 5 Which is... Which is me, by the way. That was a nice way of saying I mean, I know what it is, but if you want to just explain I it I forget that we covered know. it on a previous yeah. show. I'm sure everybody heard. But <laughs> for those of you who <laughs> might have missed it, um, a Bluetooth 5, it runs super low energy. Um, so it's not a huge power draw on your, on your device. Um, it's got a much, a vastly more... Uh, longer range so okay. it, uh, you don't have to be right up on something or even within 33 feet um, and it's also uh, it doesn't require a, a pairing protocol so it's just sort of an automatic pinging situation um, for a Bluetooth speaker that would mean you know uh, if you walked within the vicinity of the Bluetooth speaker it would know that you know it was an audio device and would automatically pair it to it and make it available for you to stream music or it would allow you to communicate with these beacons automatically without having to do anything at all yeah. though that section about this beacon technology for a while now and it hasn't really happened because the Bluetooth I mean it wasn't good wasn't enough. there like Bluetooth 4 is great it's low it's low energy it's all that but it doesn't have the range it doesn't have last year, which was actually a conference uh, all about Bluetooth, <laughs> where the whole thing is they use these beacons. Uh, it was actually a lot like Pokemon Go, where you sort of walk around and you find a beacon and it gives you a little mission to go to a different one and nice. you walk over there. Um, yeah, so but there this some is allowing that, the beacons is like, to this immediately is more, find you yeah, from yeah. vast distance. Which is really great, too. I, I'd love to be walking around a store and just have it constantly pinging my phone, being like, hey, you know, you're actually near some stuff that's on sale. Do you want to go check it out? I'll take that's you right exactly there. That's exactly what they're right there. there. <laughs> hey, notice you're wearing khakis. You know what? Dockers are on sale. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, then maybe that will be part of part of what they're going to be doing uh, You know, with that. But they definitely are going to be investing in augmented reality. So they have... Tim Cook came out and said that explicitly. But let's go on to something else, some other uh, investments that are being made. And it has to do with um, consoles, with gaming. And, you know, Apple has this model for their phones where every couple of years they, you know, you, you got to replace it pretty much any of their devices. Like they want you to always buy the new thing when they come out with it. And something that hasn't really operated on that platform are Xbox and PlayStation. Then, you know, you buy, the, you buy their system. Every few years they come out with a new one. And then you go from there. Well, they want to start modeling their operations after this, after the Apple model, which is every couple of years come out with a brand new console that you've got to buy. And and the way they would work with that is to help better uh, backlog like the previous games. Uh, what would be the right way to describe that? Backward Backwards. compatibility. Backward compatibility. Yeah. There we go. Um, backward compatibility for it for all the previous versions, so you don't have to buy a new game every time, but you want to buy the new system, and you get ingrained. Like if you have Xbox games and you can take them with you, why would you ever switch to PlayStation if you can buy a new system every couple of years and still have all your old stuff and get the new thing? That's what it sounds like they're going to be going after. Brad, I know you had some I thoughts on this. I have a lot of this. thoughts on this. Um, Brad, is, <laughs> Brad had just some, yeah. Uh, Brad, go ahead. I'm well, gonna... <laughs> so, you know, the thing about this is that PC gaming hardware is getting cheaper constantly. That, you know, we've sort of begun to hit this ceiling where we're saying, like, yeah, we can do these beautiful graphics at 4K, but mm -hmm. it, we just don't have the manpower or the computing power to really say, like, you know, we, we are very close to being ultra-realistic, and we're sort of, 
we're working on efficiencies. We're working on bringing in new features like ray traced lighting and things like that. Uh -huh. um, but you know, the, the thing is people are needing less and less power and they're going to continue to need less and less power over the next three or five years, which makes computers more computers that can game less expensive. For five hundred bucks or less right now, you can put together a very competent gaming PC that's going to last you, you know, three to five years. The only and problem with that is that is the phrase you can put together. Right. Right. Like I, right. And this is the issue is that people can they do it like a, a pre made, you know, yeah. gaming slash like home if, theater PC in a box that you just open and like connect I, via HDMI and you're going like a console? There uh, are companies Ikea that do for, that. Yeah, they're a little more expensive, but there are companies that do that. But you know, as as computer as PC building gets gets cheaper, so too are those pre built. So too are those pre configured systems are gonna follow suit. Um, and and this is a way for them to not lose relevance. That these consoles uh, in my opinion, unless you're buying a Nintendo system, are sort of a bad value when you can play most of these games on a computer. And this is a way for them to get price competitive once again and to keep relevance where they're really chasing something that PCs have been doing for years, which is backwards compatibility. I can go build a new computer for $8,000 today, and as soon as I sit down and log into Steam, I've got 200 games waiting there for me. You know, they're all working already. And that's something that honestly should have been a part of these consoles for a long time, yeah. but you can't convince someone when you have such a high turnover rate on them, you can't convince developers to continue working on their games in the same way that they do for PC. But wouldn't this change that though, if they knew that people would stick with this same yeah. platform? Right. Yeah. That they're, yeah. They're they're just trying to yeah. they're trying to catch up to what the PC gaming community is doing in a way that is going to eventually lead to again modularity. I think that this is yeah. going to turn into something where, yeah, maybe for the next five or ten years we do this thing where every two years there's a PS4 that's new and it's uh -huh. still the PlayStation, but it's like this one's even better and this one's even better. Right. They're adding in VR. And, and then VR eventually games, they're yeah. going to say like, well, instead you'll buy this box and that's a PlayStation and then if you want to get a new one instead you open it up and you pull out your graphics card yeah, you and you, swap in a new you put one. in a new one and that's kind of neat isn't it like you couldn't do that yeah. before but of course you could but <laughs> what about them I mean for sales they make a lot more money if they sell you a whole brand new console unless they saturate the market too heavily because yeah. the thing is you know the, these new consoles are going to cost more a PS4 right. Neo is going to cost you money and a Xbox One Scorpio or whatever they're calling it is going to cost you four or five hundred dollars when it comes out you know, you're going to be paying they aren't able to get the price down on higher end hardware yet mm -hmm. to the point where this is a sustainable model like i i don't think so at least i think they're going to put out this scorpio in 2017 and a bunch of people are going to say this is awesome this is powerful they're going to buy it ultimately they might be disappointed because i think you're either going to if you want high quality gaming you're going to pay six hundred dollars yeah and if you don't pay enough money then you're not getting an upgrade over the last xbox so why bother I that's mean, that's going to continue. That they're the going to continue to get this. The Scorpio would be a pretty significant leap forward from the existing platform. I mean, that, yeah. the One S is just you know it's 4K video, not even gaming. And then they took the power brick out of the equation, which is awesome. That was smart. Um, and you know it's a little bit slimmer. Other than that, you're not getting any, anything over the the yeah, Xbox yeah, One. Totally. And well, and they then there's the the different bundles of storage, I guess. So there there is a little bit different. But with the Scorpio, you know, it's supposed to do VR. And 4K gaming graphics, that's a, a big leap. But what do you tack on after that? That's what I'm saying, yeah, is that this is that they're running into another generational gap where they're after this. The they're going to be looking for something else again. Mm -hmm. Also, this who, model says, of like, oh, who says this is what's going to happen? Like, was, I mean... One of our writers. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about one of our own op-eds. Okay, was, yeah. oh, it's an op-ed. It was right. an op-ed, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm not so sure this is true. I'm going to go ahead and put it right out there. We don't always agree with each other here at yeah. DT, and sure. that's the good thing because we have really awesome debates, and it, it helps us understand what the different readers are, are thinking. Um, but, I mean, I, just because the Xbox is coming out with a One S and the Neo is coming from PlayStation, I don't know that they're going to adopt a planned obsolescence you know, well, tactic. I, I mean, but they definitely are doing the backward compatibility for the older games and keeping that going. I mean, it kind of makes sense. Sort of, I can kind of see ever. for the first yeah, time. They, yeah. sh they had the ability to do that with every previous console and they just chose not to. Right. Like Nintendo. Nintendo has chosen to do it with every previous console and it's paid off for yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, totally. Because people buy the new Nintendo consoles and they play their old Except games. Except for they're, now they're not. Except now they're not. <laughs> the new, maybe maybe we're not sure. Move. The new Nintendo console is really an interesting thing. It's barely even a console. It won't be backward compatible. They're going back to cartridges. It's yeah, uh, it's a uh, very. I think that's a smart move. Play. I know. I think the cartridges are a smart play because when was the last time you bought a disc for anything? And 3DS, they've been using cartridges for that for since it came out. I mean, it works perfectly. It's flash memory. That's the standard now. Like, why not use it? Especially when you can grow the capacity on it without changing the format at all. 
I uh, only want it if I have to blow in it I when it's actually work. Yeah, yeah, right? I mean, that's the nostalgia. I want the Smack old on the school. Top, Smack on the side. I do that though. I'll take my secure digital gun just like Tecmo Super Bowl. You got to tap it on the uh, tap it on the top a few times, blow on it, and then it's you like get it to work. Like going back to vinyl yeah. from CDs, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got to bring back the tactile experience. Ah, nostalgia Mario does sell. So maybe that's richer, you know? maybe that's what they'll go for. But that's <laughs> that's right there. You can uh, chime in on that at digitaltrends.com. Take a look at the article. Let us know what you think about that and whether you think this is the way that it's going to be going. One last um, note on that. Yeah. Um, okay, Brad. I just want to point out on the, <laughs> on the <laughs> whenever Brad's tickled, yeah. just well, love, well, that, that's going to be throughout, throughout this podcast too. It's going to be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need a buzzer that I can like hit that turns on a light. Um, the Scorpio is a really interesting thing. You were talking about 4K gaming. Um, the the costs associated with building a box that can run games reliably at 30 frames per second, which for whatever reason the console crew has decided is the standard. Um, in order to reach that point takes quite a bit of horsepower uh, and it's going to be expensive. And one of the ways that Microsoft has said that this is like the thing is in their initial announcement video, they said that these pixels will be the highest quality uncompressed pixels anywhere. This is something they said in their initial video and people sort of asked like, what does that mean? Because it doesn't mean anything <laughs> to say that our pixels are Buzzword. uncompressed, <laughs> right. unlike your pixels, which are compressed. Shiny um, lights. They ended up removing it from that video a couple days later. Oh, that, really? that segment of it was like unceremoniously clipped out of the YouTube So it's video. all just puffery. So they, they sort of had to backtrack and be oil. like, okay, there's no such thing as, you know, uncompressed pix, high quality pixels, you know. <laughs> you got us on that one. Yeah. yeah. Right. The one thing. Hey, 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 hey. You were paying attention, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a gotcha. test. Yeah. God damn it. I'm All right. buying a PC gaming rig. <laughs> 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 Screw you, Xbox. Uh. All right, let's 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 go on to something else. This was a huge topic on the show about, a, I don't know, a month, two months ago, when these videos started coming out of a potential actual hoverboard and not the ones that were floating like six inches off of the ground that weighed like 300 pounds or the ones that roll on the ground and don't actually hover but Which for some reason society calls them hoverboards dumbest it's not those ones. name ever we're not talking about those ones we're talking about real hoverboards and it was this company flyboard uh, well zapata racing i think is what it is but it was their flyboard <laughs> air that came out and there were these videos and originally the videos didn't really show the guy taking off they still don't show him taking off uh they just kind of showed this guy floating around a lake and it looked like it could have been hung from a helicopter or something like that. Um, and then they came out with another video showing him actually using this apparently with no, no strings attached literally and actually, and landing it. And he set some Guinness world record for the longest flight on a man on a hoverboard hoverboard. And, um, now it is most definitely real because of this. It has been acquired by a military tech company. The military has purchased Zapata Racing and the Flyboard Air technology. No, hold on. You said military tech company. Military tech so company. So is it really the military or is it a military it's contractor? Like a, it's like that a, makes it's a contractor. contractor. So they develop – it's a company called Implant Sciences, and they specialize in developing technology for the Department of Homeland Security and other clients. Mm -hmm. So they do work for them. They did – how buy much? it. They haven't. They haven't released the details of the deal yet. Okay. Not that I've seen I'm, I'm curious how much they yeah. bought this for. It, yeah, I think that right now they're they're really close to actually signing it, but they've already announced it. So I'm sure we'll find out how much money it was purchased for. I guess a lot, because the uh, the owner of Zapata Racing said that this is going to allow them to expand everything they're doing right now and fully invest all of these funds and contacts that this military company has into palatial estates in their homeland. Yeah. Know, right. <laughs> <laughs> they will adorn with beautiful women and hovering, riches. Hovering and, well, of course. Rich mahogany. What's the point of a hoverboard if you don't have beautiful women hanging out? Um, so they've developed this, and there's talk now about what is going to happen. So uh, Frankie Zapata, that's the company's founder, he said, the contacts that implant sciences have with the U.S. Army was something very exciting for me. We have the technology, but having access to those contacts, contacts was very valuable to us. The money will bring to the company also means that we'll be able to develop a new range of technologies. And some of the things that they're talking about that they want to focus on are, in addition to really honing the hoverboard, they want to make jet bikes, then they want to make yes, floating, please. yeah, exactly, everything they're talking about, uh, floating medical stretchers, <laughs> uh, floating rescue stations, scaffolding, and unmanned heavy payload delivery drones. These are all things they're going to so start So just basically... On. Everything in Star Wars. Everything in Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we're going to have our own 
Yeah, yeah, bikes. I want anti-gravity boots, but that's probably not going to happen either. <laughs> I feel like so much of that stuff is super, so you think that's, super unrealistic. But uh, but that's also what we said about the Flyboard Air when it came out. I mean, I think the merit in it is the fact that they're going for it. Like, they're yeah. actually they're going to explore this technology a little bit further and see where it could potentially go. I don't think a lot of those things that they said are actually going to come to fruition. Like, maybe heavy payload drones because... It's like what? It's like one turbine on that board, and it's like floating a dude around for 25 yeah. minutes. That's pretty impressive. That could probably carry a lot of cargo. But all that floating stretchers, really? You're a, you're a doubter. Seems you're dangerous. a non-believer. Seems a little dangerous. <laughs> um, I don't know. All that other stuff. I, I mean, what are the real military applications of this going to be? I, they're not going to be hoverboard board soldiers. That's well, vehicles, though. You know, like especially you talk about you know desert warfare, and there's mines and things like that mm-hmm. under underground and if you can have a vehicle that's not putting any weight on the ground no but it's spraying sand all over the place sand man everywhere. what are you yeah. talking about <laughs> everything that's sand making a mess it's not important it's it perfect. still has a person on it you get sand and everything maybe they just don't want anybody else to have it maybe that's the real point it's like you know what we got a lot of money this seems pretty cool <clears throat> don't want anybody else developing this so let's so they just you don't want like a green goblin yeah. situation you exactly know? <laughs> we don't want this in the private sector are you kidding me <laughs> got another <laughs> green goblin <laughs> situation on our hands you know you're going to be shooting private people. rockets into the space and stuff. That's ridiculous. <laughs> we can't let can't let that happen. That's what NASA's for. Yeah. Well, I mean, if they make a jet bike, are you kidding me? I am 100 percent. Oh yeah, a speeder bike. Yeah. Through the trees. But then you got to oh, wait yeah. for the FAA to say it's okay for you to fly that sucker to work. <laughs> well, yeah, okay. All right. There's that. There's a lot of roadblocks to all this crazy pie in the sky hey, stuff that they're... I go over roadblocks in my hover bike. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Straight over them. Mic drop. All right. Next topic. That's, that's so perfect. That's done. We wrapped. <laughs> well, there it is. All right. They're also saying that they're going to continue to develop things for the uh, commercial market, but we'll see what happens. You can read all about it at digitaltrends.com. All right. <laughs> let's go to our final topic here, and this is one, Drew, I know you wanted to talk about um, because <laughs> you, you don't think it's getting enough attention. And it has to do... <laughs> Not necessarily that, but continue. <laughs> all right. Well, it has to do with this the uh, first completely solar-powered uh, plane made a trip around the world. So it's yeah. called uh, the Solar Impulse 2, and it's 100% solar-powered. And uh, they just completed this, this trip. They've been working on this for years, and it, uh, it finally happened. So it is 100%. There's no extra fuel on board. Other than what it what it gets from which is, the solar power, which is crazy, right? Like that's pretty mind blowing. Like mm-hmm. a plane just flew around our entire planet without a single drop of fuel. Yeah, like let that sink in for a minute. That shit is crazy. But the funny thing about this for me is like I've been watching this happen for. I mean, they've been doing this mission for like the better part of the last year because you know yeah. they've had to fly to one place and then stop, and they hit a roadblock when like their batteries fried like a few months ago. It's been this whole or- ordeal. But the funny thing about it is throughout this whole progression of it, nobody's really cared. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's not that it's, like, really cool. Like, everybody agrees, like, sweet, solar-powered plane, but nobody yeah. seems to give a shit, man, to be honest. Like, I've, and I'm saying this from the perspective of, like, a journalist, somebody who, like, I, we post these articles, they don't get shared at all. Like, nobody, and when, we, when they do, no Facebook likes. Nobody's, nobody's super why, excited about this. Why do you think really, that is? I don't know. I'm, I, that's... What I'm really is it just a marketing about, like, standpoint, maybe from, or maybe from the layperson standpoint, it doesn't seem like it's a monumental technological achievement? Because yeah. you know, you take a couple pieces of balsa wood, throw some solar panels on it. You know, the thing's light as a as a feather, right? It's powering itself by the sun because it's above the clouds. So how hard was that to do? You know, I mean, yeah, it's that minimalism. The thing I tend to do with technology in general, <laughs> I think the public <clears throat> might be doing, um, you know, because it seems like conceptually it's like, well, yeah, we've had solar power for, for yeah. years. This thing is super uh-huh. light. It, it wouldn't need a ton of energy. You know, you just have your one little propeller and it just kind of toots around the world and it has an unending supply of energy. And so... I think everybody, yeah, everybody was just like, well, duh, of course you can do that. <laughs> like, exactly. everybody is so, like, <laughs> solar's been around long enough that everybody, like, it's almost, like, not impressive I, anymore that we can do that. Are exactly. we so Are we so jaded is that as is? society that we're so... No, I think <laughs> that we're so blown away by, like, the, the, the hoverboards the of the bikes. world. The stuff where we are pushing into, like, next century sci-fi movie stuff 
that something as uh, seemingly simple as you know flying around the world on solar, solar power just doesn't have the kind of punch that some of these other sensationalist that's things a, that's do. a good point the punch aspect i think yeah. the fact that this took so many months to finish yeah kind of was almost anticlimactic yeah it yeah it took some of the, it just, the whole thing yeah out. dragged it out and you, you check in like every couple of months we'd write an article about it hey they made it to their next leg plus a yeah. rocket like, landing itself a right. rocket landing yeah. itself got a a rocket cool stuff steals the thunder us. of of something like that well and there's so many things that are happening so fast i mean between that drones uh, delivery drones you know i mean just virtual reality in general which is still you know new to the public if, for for the large part yeah, that's right. Maybe a solar power. I mean, something we're getting isn't slapped that, yeah. left and right with these amazing innovations. And I mean, sometimes I think, well, it's just because you work at a, a tech publication. Right. No, I mean, I look at my, my Facebook feed and it's just one amazing thing after mm-hmm. another. It's like I'm getting over amazed. You know, the term yeah. doesn't even apply anymore. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of changed the. I don't know. Well, I used to be stoked when Atari came out with a new game, you right. know, that had slightly better <laughs> yeah. graphics than, you know, and. I play River Raid for hours. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, I, I understand. Does that uh, mean we're living in the future where we're just yes. like, we is that it? Is this the future? Is that this what is this it? is? Is this the point where we're just we're like, at, we live in a world uh, where you think ho- you can take the headphones yeah. back out of Yeah, big deal. <laughs> Hoverboards, they look great, sure. <laughs> Boring. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe that is. Maybe there's just so many new things that are happening so fast that, uh, that it's not. I still don't have my holodeck. That's the main thing, though. But we're getting closer. Getting very we're close. getting closer. Give it a couple months. You'll be all right. A couple months, I'll be <laughs> living in a holodeck. All this will be recorded in there. Um, all right. Well, there it is. That's at the bottom of the sea, by the way. You'll be at the bottom of the sea. Oh, that's that right. Holodeck. Yep. 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 One of the only that's people. Be your special Bragging place. rights. Yeah. Everybody will be. You want to correct down there. Uh, all right. I totally derailed the whole thing. You had a nice, round, I had cute it. little pack. I had around. it, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, so, so there we go. You can read all about the Solar Impulse 2 at digitaltrends.com or don't, uh, as Drew said. Uh, <laughs> but there's lots of other things there. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to this show. So we do this every Thursday at 2.30 p.m. I saw in the uh, live chat there's some people who have just discovered the show, which is great. Uh, you can subscribe to the the audio version and listen to all the back episodes on iTunes and Stitcher, wherever you find podcasts. And of course, on our website, digitaltrends.com slash podcasts. It's all really easy to find. And you can watch our other shows that we have between the streams and close to the metal, which we need a new theme song for. But uh, I will get into that later. Um, Submit your theme songs on digitaltrends.com. Yeah, right? Yeah. We're going to have a contest. Give, give us your sick riffs. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All right. I think that's about it for today. So thanks so much for tuning in. We'll be back next week with another episode. We'll